Special thanks to Flare on Toast and Flareon Toast for recommending Adam, as well as some handle who... Wait, Alex, the video from earlier in May says, Cat, oh, oh no, someone is very confused. Crip face. Ah, the separated food is so satisfying to look at. And is immediately undermined by an obligatory he always eats the same thing shot. You don't need establishing shots showing the quirks of neurotypicals, why do you need this? Yay, spinning! I think emptying the freezer and filling the dirty laundry bag are supposed to show that he doesn't know how to shop for groceries or do the laundry, which by ableist logic is autism's fault somehow, but that's not autism, that's irresponsible parenting. The Big Bang came from as little as a 20 pound chunk of space about 14 billion years ago. 20 pounds? N no, I, do you think pound is a unit of size? Even if it was, you'd still be wrong. The Big Bang Theory says, women are inferior to men and trans people don't exist. Wait, what am I reading? Oh, wrong Big Bang Theory. Uh... Ah, here we go. The Big Bang Theory says that all the matter in the universe, which if we're using Earth's surface gravity as a reference is a touch more than 20 pounds, was at one point condensed into a singularity with no dimensions where size is meaningless. A 20 pound chunk of space about 14 billion years ago that expanded to the size of the universe in 10 to the minus 39 seconds. No, 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 wrong again. I get that this movie is a decade old, so maybe it's unfair to use current scientific knowledge, but this claim is debunked by common sense. If the universe is 14 billion years old and is still expanding, then it took 14 billion years to expand to its current size. This guy is supposed to have a special interest in space yet messes up basic stuff like this? Bitch, I watch PBS Space Time. You can't slip this shit past me. Didn't anyone tell you and mom that only children are emotional words spoiled? Too trusting and unequipped to cope? I should really be able to expect better from movies about autism, but I can't. The Star Tracker system is... No, no more background Ready. radiation black oh holes or Mars robots. Stop shutting down autistic people's info dumps. I don't care if the topic doesn't interest you. You don't ever shush someone who's excited. Lunchtime is for guy talk. Two guys talking about women. Cowardly of you to assume Adam is straight. But I'm a creep. I'm a weirdo. What the hell am I doing here? I don't really belong here, you know. Damn it, this is exactly the creepiness I was trying to avoid by not watching the new Adam movie. When your father explained your things. Autistic. It's a word. Whatever you cook up to avoid it is always going to be more offensive. I'd believe this if he wasn't white, but looking at kids at school isn't even suspicious, let alone illegal. It's usually a parent waiting to see their kid. My father lived here too. Oh, where is he now? Queens. Queens? Oh, he died six weeks ago. Damn, both his parents are dead, one recently, and he just got fired today. It's like being autistic isn't the reason his life sucks. Color me impressed. What about your mother? She died when I was eight. Eight? That's the age that all autistic people are. I guess when your autism is traumagenic, that's when you get the kind with the robot voice. Were you excited sexually when we were in the park? Oh hey, I found the Adam drinking game. I shot every time he's creepy. Well, I asked because I was, and I wondered if you were too. Actually, never mind. Don't drink to that. I don't want to be responsible for any alcohol-related deaths. I have this thing that's got, called Asperger's Syndrome. Oh. Okay, maybe you couldn't pinpoint autism, but you're fucking oblivious if you didn't notice that he's neurodivergent. When I was younger, I would have just thought you were sexually excited because I was. That's called mind blindness? It's called neurotypical privilege. What do you know about Asperger's Syndrome? Oh, well, it's a developmental disorder. Why are you in such a rush to be wrong? Kind of a high-functioning autism. Functioning labels are meaningless. That clarifies nothing. So you're saying really that he's not prime relationship material, right? She said nothing of the sort. 
You know how I know? Because she said nothing at all. I haven't read Pretending to be Normal, so I'm taking an educated guess here, but from what's available online, it seems fine. What's not fine is Jessica Kingsley Publisher. They need to go bankrupt. The person who designed this indeed monster LinkedIn knockoff clearly had a lot of fun. The corner ad says, BS home loans, don't think, give us your money. This job description is for a teaching position, but under job category, it says engineering. Rom, could we get that all to go? <gasps> He's uncomfortable in crowds, but she accepts him! Regardless of this book's content, it definitely has the most unnecessarily bloated title. Also, it's published by Jessica Kingsley. This movie feels very empty. It's like the side characters are only around for as long as they need to serve the script, and then they blink out of existence until they're needed again. And no one else besides Beth lives in Adam's apartment complex. Harold, they're lesbians! Can someone help me understand this exchange? She's writing a book starring raccoons. He asks, Instead of making stuff up, why can't you write about the real raccoons? She explains that It's a children's book, not a nature book. He says he would Probably like the nature book better. Amused by that, she agrees. Yeah, you probably would. Presumably because, yeah, he's not a children. He gets upset and she says, Oh no, I didn't mean it like that, I meant this, and puts his hand on her boob. I don't get it. Is it a neurotypical thing, a straight thing, an allosexual thing? I, I, I'm lost. But autistic people should be able to understand movies about autism. So whatever it means, it's a sin. Do you want sex? Hi, can I get one sex, please? This is not a sin, by the way. This movie is modeling how a healthy conversation about consent should go down. Unlike the other movie called Adam, which doesn't do that at all. The editor has put different music over a shot of a street musician. Let me hear the saxophone, damn it! Ha ha ha! Fooled you, dumb Adam! We got so far without showing Adam's childhood, but the writer just couldn't resist an overreacting meltdown scene portraying autistic people as violent. Your child, Adam. Fuck Asperger's, you're a fucking child. And the infantilization train rolls on. She later claims she was scared, but this seems more vindictive. Oh, and speaking of trains, time to train, one hour and ten minutes. Kidding, it's just a transition shot. One more thing about Adam. He's not for you. It's not his fault, but he, he's more like your child than, than anything else. At least Beth had a reason to call him a child. She had never seen him triggered or in a meltdown before and didn't want to put up with it. But her dad doesn't know that. This is just straight up prejudice. We'll never have a moment where we look into each other's eyes and know exactly what the other person's feeling. You don't get that with neurotypical partners either. Eye contact is an inherently imprecise form of communication. He's never told me that he loves me. I don't know what it would mean to him if he did. It would mean that he loves you. Like, what the fuck? He's not an alien. What happened in this movie besides an autistic guy existing? Two people dated, then one of them had to move for a job, so they broke up. If that's all you're gonna give me, you have to at least get the autism part right. But they couldn't be bothered. Hey, Bessie Boo, just want to make sure you got home, okay? Home, okay?